on the same page, so therefore I can enter you guys into the next one. All right, so when given a problem like this, guys, there's a couple things I want you to understand. First of all, I said using inverse operations, right? So when we're solving, we want to undo everything that's happening to our variable. Now, Anthony, you can see that in this problem, there's a lot of things that's happened to our variable, right? Our variable is being multiplied by 2. It's being subtracted by 3. All of that is under the radical, right? Then outside of the radical, it's being added by 3, and then it's equal to 8. So to use inverse operations, the best thing that I recommend doing first is before we undo, if you guys follow your reverse order of operations, remember a radical is like the same thing as a, a rational power, right? Yes? Same thing as like a rational power. So the main important thing we want to do first is always undo everything that's, so what we're going to do is isolate the radical first. So that's the first thing you want to isolate is, is the radical. So to do that, first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to subtract a 3 on both sides. Now I have the square root of 2 times x minus 3 is equal to 5. Now that I've isolated the radical, remember when we isolated absolute value? Remember we did that? We isolated the absolute value before we started solving? This is kind of the same thing. You're going to isolate the radical first. Now we do our inverse operation. So to undo the radical, to get rid of the radical, is to basically use the inverse operation, yes? Yeah, the inverse operation of taking the square root would be squaring. And if it was the cube root, you would cube, right? If it was the fourth root, you'd take the fourth power. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and that's going to leave me with 2x minus 3 equals 25. Now it's a little bit more familiar area for you guys, correct? Do you guys feel a little bit more comfortable solving it from here? Yes. So we just add 3. Then you have 2x equals 28, divided by 2, divided by 2, x equals 14. Now, I do not remember. What did we talk about extraneous solutions? When was that? Was that apps? No. Rash did we talk about? No, we didn't do rational. When did we do extraneous solutions? Huh? Yeah, we did talk about, well, I don't know. I don't remember when we talked about extraneous. Um, either way. The main important thing that we want to do for these problems, unlike solving equations or quadratics, where a lot of times you know, we say, hey, guys, you can always check your answer, it's really, 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 really important um, for you guys to check your answers because not all the solutions are always going to work. It's not as simple as like linear equation. You guys probably, if you guys remember checking your answer to linear equation, when you solve linear equation and then check your answer, unless you did your math wrong, it always works, right? Same thing with quadratics. Well, here, you could do the math right, but you could have a solution that is actually extraneous, that is actually not, a par not actually a solution, even while doing all your math right. So it's really important for this homework or for this section to make sure you always check your answer. So let's go into it. So I plug 14 back in for x. 2 times 14 is 28. 28 minus 3 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. So therefore, my answer is verified. Right. So please make sure you're checking your answers, because I can guarantee you guys there's going to be some extraneous solutions 